Hello friends, I'm Chad Coffin, welcoming you to the River Church Telecast with Pastor Dale Berry. I'll be back at the end of this broadcast to bring you more information on the River Church. And now, here is Pastor Dale Berry. We have to dig in there in our heels and say no. We reject the direction that this nation is going in, if, it's, if you don't think it's going right. John Kennedy put a man on the moon, and Joe Biden put a man in the woman's restroom. If that don't tear you up as a Christian, your wood is wet. In some ways, that means I could have just said, you probably ain't saved. Don't tell me that it don't bother you for some grown man, transvestite style, going in the bathroom where my little girls are, or your little girls are. Huh? Ain't happening, huh? Well, it is unless we do something. And that's why we're riled up. Isn't that right? That's why we're all riled up. That's why people are joining different groups to be a part of something. Amen. You say, well, I just think the church ought to have a better spirit about them. Somebody's got to stand up and say something. Listen, a year ago, next week, a year ago, they shut the churches down and said, I don't care whether you like it or not, your doors are shut. That was a dress rehearsal for what's coming. Unless... We fling the doors wide open right now and infiltrate society. Not just settle for the four walls. Infiltrate our society. Get involved and do not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You better believe I'm here to deal with politics. And yes, I'm a believer. I'm here to save you from hell, pal. You say, well, that's kind of bold. That's what we need. I've been nice. I've been nice my whole ministry life, my whole adult life. Just try to be nice. Well, I don't think y'all talk about politics from the pulpit. I think there should probably be a season where that's all we talk about. You say, well, I want you to preach the word. Let's just preach the word about politics. You know, ultimately down the road, how this thing kind of ends, uh, your head goes in a guillotine. If you just lay back and do nothing. You heard the old statement, heads roll? Well, that's, I don't really want to say that today. That's not a real pretty sight. You know, they chop that head off and it just pops off and rolls. Becomes the devil's trophy. You say, you're implanting fear. No, I'm not. I'm trying to implant awareness. Wake up. The encounter that I had a year ago next week was a wake up. I didn't have to be shooken for months. I was instantly shook to the core and I woke up. I wish I'd have woke up that way in 2013 when the Lord told me I was stiff necked. I had all the evidence. I had a major crick in my neck for several months. I still, didn't, I still didn't get it. Have you noticed God speak to some people prophetically in fragmented language? Have you noticed that? You know, he said to me, prayer revival. What does that mean? You know, prayer revival, you know. Sometimes I get a full statement. Sometimes I get a partial statement. We have to dig in our heels and say, no, we reject the direction this nation is going in. I'll skip the John Kennedy part. I think you got the message. We have to tell the left, that we reject your atheistic, godless, satanic agenda and we will not participate in it. We will do everything in our power to oppose it righteously. Not violently, but righteously. And they created a violent picture because they knew what your approach would be would be a righteous approach. But they created a violent approach so they could attack you back. And they all simultaneously adopted these phrases that says the same thing. Oh, we need unity. We need unity. We need unity. I'm not unifying with the devil. There is no basis for me to unify with the devil. He kills, steals, and destroys. I'm on the bandwagon that brings life abundantly, super, super abundantly, overflowing. Everything that produces life is from God. You say, well, what about lying signs and wonders? They don't really produce life. They lie. And right now, you probably got a season where, you know, you're not going to deal with the person of Antichrist, just the spirit of it. But if you'll get on the bandwagon right now and push back darkness, push it back. Just keep pushing back. I don't know if I can make a difference. That was my call. And that's why I got a stiff neck. I wasn't doing anything wrong, just not doing this. And I woke up with a crick in my neck. Bad one. 
I used them little vibrating machines trying to hit the nerves. and I, You know, I tried everything. You know, I know this sounds strange, but did you know one day, I, after days and days and days of pain, I couldn't get rid of and crick in my neck. I was leaning over at the table, and I just leaned over and just dropped my hands kind of like this. What I found myself in was in a bowed position. Instantly, I knew the answer to the crick in my neck was going to come from the prayer posture. I know it's crazy, but instantly I had relief from pain because of the... You say, well, that's probably a pinched nerve. You release. I know, but God was still talking. You know what I'm saying? He was still talking. So I, I realize now that every time, if I can't get relief, for that first three or four months, I just bend over and get in a prayer position. Then I realize, well, if you're going to be here, why not pray? It's the prayer posture, right? So I started going to pray. And the next thing you knew, I, I was free of all that. And I repented of being stiff-necked. I said, Lord, I'll do whatever I'm supposed to do, whatever you need me to do. I, I don't know what all that is, but I'll do it. And so that's 2013. Last year was 2020. Seven years later, I've still received these things fragmented in fragmented language, and I haven't got the full light on everything, but the Lord was building something. He was telling something along the way. And uh, so, I, I, you know, I, finally, God knows you're slow in process sometimes. He knows. So the momentum comes from, how's the momentum come, Pastor? It comes from pressing into God. Somebody say pressing into God. And I, I got that recently, and, and I'm dumping it out the way I get it. You say, well, Pastor, you ought to have this way before now. Should I? Why didn't you tell me way before now? You didn't have it either. Oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Amen. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, I'm in my 60s. Most of my efforts from this point on is for somebody else. It's not for me. Right? You say, you plan on leaving the planet? No, not for a long time. By the time you get to your early to mid-60s, you've had a lot of fun already. It's time for you to sink your heels and do something for everybody else to have some fun. So when I'm with my family, my kids, my grandkids, I'm thinking about the world they're going to have to live in after I leave. If Jesus tarries. Well, Jesus probably ain't going to tarry. That's what they said way back before Paul. So I'm with you on that one. Jesus is coming soon. I believe that. But what if he don't in man's time consideration? What if he don't? I can't do like I did in the previous 60 and say, oh, I'll all be old by then anyway. Don't worry about it. I tried that for 60 years. Didn't work. We're still here. We still face the problems, and they're getting worse because we're giving them permission. Isn't that right? Philippians 3 says, brethren, this is 13 and 14, Philippians 3. We're talking about pressing. Now, here, here I wrote this statement down, okay? And I've, I've said it several times. I'm going to say it again. When I back off from seeking, earnestly seeking God, I lose ground in the realms of God. So from that, the Lord was able to speak to me. If you can lose ground in the realms of God, you can gain momentum in the realms of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So say this with me. Say, I press toward the mark for the prize. That's right. I press toward the mark for the prize. Now, as a prerequisite to that, Paul said, Forgetting those things which are behind. How many of you have had just setbacks, roadblocks, stop signs, all kinds of things that are always just cropping up trying to keep you from pressing, trying to keep you from having any momentum, trying to set you back, hold you back, keep you from progressing in the way you know God has for you to progress. We've all had that happen. The Bible even says, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. All those obstacles that try to slow you down, you know, Push them out of the way. Push and press. Push and press. And push back darkness on your way. You take territory and push darkness out of the way while you're doing it. Amen? Amen. So uh, Mark 5, the one with the issue of blood, beginning in Mark 5, verse 25, it says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, somebody say heard of Jesus, 
Somebody say, I heard of Jesus. What happened? It says, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. In other words, people are thronging, you know. No way you're getting through the crowd. But she produced a resistance to get through the crowd. You got to produce a resistance to move forward. You got to produce a resistance to have momentum. All my life, I've just kind of rode whatever wave there was. It's great. When the waves, when the waves go and ride the wave. But when, the, when it fizzles out, you're going to have to get on the offense and create a, a resistance. Did you know the armor of God really is offensive? First statement made is put it on. Put it on. That's an offensive move. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Bible says we're aware of his devices. We're aware, but sometimes we go years and years and years and don't act like we're aware. You know what I mean? And the, ant- the spirit of Antichrist is working in the earth, the thing that will guarantee he cannot do what he wants to do. Till we're done with our job and Jesus takes us out of here. Might as well go collectively. Why do we have to plan on me going years and years before you? Why don't we plan on me staying until you go? Right? I don't like funerals. You're a pastor. You're supposed to... I hate funerals. Most of the time it's all sadness. You're, you're a pastor and you don't like to do funerals? I like doing if we could celebrate the life. I like that. I like celebrating life and I like to bring comfort to the family because the reality is they are suffering a loss. I like to celebrate the life. Do you know I'm not necessarily thinking that cremation is biblical, but there's something different about nobody having to sit and look at that dead body? They bring a lively picture in. They bring a, a big old thing in. They watch a, a slideshow of all the good memories. And they sit there and they chuckle and they laugh. They say, you remember when that time, you know. You know what I'm saying? And they'll have a moment of sadness. We're not saying it's not a reality. It is a reality. It's a loss. But it's not an ultimate loss. It's a loss for us for now. But the Bible tells us to be encouraged. We're going to be with them again. If they got saved, right? Right now your job is to make sure they do. Not to wonder after they leave. <laughs> You're not supposed to have to wonder. So she moved in the press behind, didn't she? And touched his garment. Verse 28, where she said, she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. What if all of us in here said, if I'll push back, everything will change. What if we all said that? Where's that in my notes? Oh, nowhere. What if we all said together, we're going to push back darkness. We're going to see light go forward. Momentum, not just, well, the church did okay for a month. The church didn't do okay for a month. I suffered financially for a season. I had a good season. And realistically, we need to get our mind off a false stimulus package. You know, it's funny how no, so many people won't buy in until you give them some cash. Then they'll just kind of turn their head and say, I'm in. You know what I'm saying? What about all them hundreds of dollars? Don't you need them? I can use them, but not at the cost of the ultimate. What's going to happen? Trillions of dollars worth of debt. And you booted Trump out. He was going to take it back from China. You booted him out, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. It was funny, though. I don't know how that would have worked out, but I couldn't put it past him. He, he'd try. Amen. Some would say, well, I don't really carry the way. Well, maybe you don't need the money. Maybe some people are desperate in here and they need the money. And realistically, the cash that's going to be given to people would be all right. It's all that other crap they signed us up for that we have to just basically shake our fist at God with them, you know? And you think I'm hard on congressmen and senators? Well, if they're really screaming up there on the Capitol steps and at the White House, how come I can't hear it from here? I'm tired of it. Where's all the real Americans today? Like that. I'm not in it for a career, in other words. I'm not a career politician. I'm telling you, we got to have election reform. we got to have every Christian screaming right now so that we, these machines and all that extra ballot stuff is gone and never to be used again. If we don't scream it now, it's already pre-approved, and we did it. We did it. Pastor, don't you think this is detrimental to the church? 
what church? There ain't going to be no church. We don't stand up right now. There ain't going to be no church. They already stripped us of our power and made us believe they could shut our doors while Walmart and Target exploded. And the tithe, you know where the tithe went to during that time? Walmart and Target. <laughs> Not yours, of course. But all the people that were willing just to let it shut down, I'm not talking about you did you played safe. It's all fine. There's nothing wrong with using some common sense and being smart. I'm talking about the people that just said, well, well, so what? No church, no church. The people that said that, they went on to Walmart, Target. And they wore their mask religiously. I'm not saying I don't ever wear a mask. I'll wear a mask just to keep somebody from being afraid. You know what I mean? If I think they're going to be scared, I wear a mask. But I ain't wearing one all the time. I ain't breathing that poison that's coming out designed to stay out there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I better wrap this up. Getting late. After all, all my Baptist friends are going to lead us to the steakhouse. want to see how you respond to that. Who cares about the steakhouse? America's going to hell in a handbasket if we don't react. We can pass up the steakhouse a few times. Some of us have already. Look at these guys. Man. I, I looked at you. I did a double take when you want to go chat. Was, that chat? Man. We got to redo our commercials because you ain't the same guy on TV. Now. You're a different guy. Amen. She said, for, he, she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. I really don't have to read the rest of that text. She was healed. She was healed. A lot of people don't move in the press because they don't believe in the result. That's a promise. A lot of people don't believe a small group can make a difference. Yet, a very popular word throughout spirituality and history is remnant. And I, 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 permit, I personally believe that <clears throat> nobody should sit back and expect the remnant to go do it without you. I think if everybody believed in being a part of the remnant, it would be a multitude. You know what I'm saying? So we have to organize. We have to organize. And I hope I have a door of utterance open to me today that calls every pastor in this region out. I hope I don't get on there and get solved. I might get on there and do a disclaimer right off the bat and say, let me just go ahead and say this right off the bat. The words said on this program today are not necessarily the views of those that are hosting the program. Because they, they may not be ready for what I'm about to say. Now, now this guy has really got it together. He's doing it. He's doing it. Last week he had a guy talk about state election process and stuff. It's, it's really good what I heard. I also got the thumb drive now to hear the rest. Amen. So momentum. When I back off from seeking God's face, I lose ground in the realms of God. What I've noticed lately, this has become a reality, and I've never seen this before in my life. If I press into what God's saying to me right now, and I just keep pressing into whatever he's saying right now, don't back off from it. Keep pressing into it. I, I, I begin to look around. Whoa, some things are starting to happen. Some new people are coming in. Some people are coming back. I'm just saying, there's you can put a face on it sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It, it's obvious sometimes. I mean, to some people, the pandemic's kind of waning. The people are opening up the states. It might be safe to go back to church. I mean, hey. And, and everybody's at different places. There is a percentage that die from COVID. So people have, every person has to consider what they do. Every person has to evaluate Amen. I don't have that option. I just got to quit doing what I've been sent to do to do that. So here's another one that's momentum. Close obedience and direction gaps. Where have we heard that before? When you have a gap between the direction you got and the obedience, you stop the big mo. You say, well, God spoke that to you a long time ago. I know. It's like he gave me the 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 wake-up call in 2013. He's trying to get me way back there. Amen. 
Pay and plan now. Did you know the money is available right now for anything God's leading you to do? Everything God is speaking to you about right now, the money's available. We think we got to raise the money, don't we? We think. I did one simple little obedience. And I believe for the same thing for Wayne, too. I did one simple obedience. The moment I signed the contract, took a picture of the contract, and sent it in the email, the moment I heard that airplane take off by email, you know what I'm talking about? The moment that happened, I heard in my spirit, man, $5 will change the world. $5 will change the world. Instantly, I knew the Lord was saying, anybody can give $5. If it really does make a difference, it's going to really bless people to know that they made a difference. And it was a small enough amount to where they could be used in it. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Believe on purpose and receive on purpose. You know how many times I believed for a minute and then quit believing for a minute? <laughs> believed for a minute and doubted for a minute. Back and forth, believed and doubted. Anybody ever done that? The moment you believe on purpose, you're going to have to receive on purpose from that, mo that moment on. Yeah, the moment you believe on purpose, where have we heard this before? The Lord downloaded all these things right here, except that first one about uh, when I back off from seeking His God's face. The rest of them he gave to me in one little prayer. And all I did was I prayed. I said, God, let me just pull it up. It's on my other one. I can get it to come up. Here we go. I prayed this prayer. I was inquiring of the Lord. I said, Lord, it's funny how God answers us in some odd places in prayer. But I pray. I said, God, I need some direction on the wealth to deal with financial needs. In other words, I was saying, God, it's going to take a level of wealth to do what you're showing me as the vision you have for this house. It's going to take a certain amount. What, are, what do I need to do? I need, to, I need some direction on the wealth to deal with financial needs. And the first thing he said to me had the word direction in it. He said, close obedience and direction gaps. You know, there's another way to say that. Well, if you just obey the direction I give you. Whew. That's real close to home. That's me just confessing my sin right in front of everybody, isn't it? I, I'm just as real as anybody. I mean, I, I miss it too. Amen. You know, back there in 2013, the Lord said, you know, he said, uh, you're stiff-necked. I never thought that I could doubt God's plan to use me as being stiff-necked. But it is. God tells you he's going to use you. Why, why you bend your, bow your neck back? You know, why you do that? Well, I didn't harden my heart. I just, I just didn't do it because I just couldn't believe God used me that way. God has no provision for doubt. None. None. If he said do it, he meant it. He wasn't kidding. Believe on purpose and receive on purpose. Allow what God says about you and your life to be believable. I know it's just you from the wrong side of the tracks. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed. You're born in the wrong family. I know it's just you. <laughs> But that has never been how God looks at it. That's, how, that's what's been bombarded in you your whole life. That is never how God has seen you. He has never seen you that way. He has seen you as a world changer. You're sitting among history makers right now. Whether they know it or not, they are. They are. Amen. You know what I did? I went over not too long ago after I found out that somebody bought my building. Anybody noticed it? Clinton Highway, anybody noticed that? A bunch of used cars sitting over now. These guys down here that are Rusty Wallace, they basically, they got the new mile just about down through here. You know, there's a big other dealer being born. In, in my past, I would have said, oh, well, guess I missed it. You know, the first thought I had and the first statement came out of my mouth was, wonder how we can network together. And my approach to them is going to be, hey, how did you feel the first time you saw a Taco Bell and a pilot in the same room? Yeah, but they won't do that at the car dealership. They won't do it with a Taco Bell and a pilot either. And they won't put a buddy's barbecue on Emory Road and, and with a gas station. But they did, and they do over and over. Well, yeah, McDonald's and Walmart or, or Subway and Walmart, banks in Walmart or Kroger's or Food City. They won't do that. I, I worked in those places. I, I was one of the management that would say it. We'll never do anything like that. Here it is, baby. It is. 
Hey, there was a, there's what? Yeah. There was a time, there was a time way back there when I said with my own mouth as I managed my department, they will never go to colleges and hire managers off, off of campus right out of college graduation while I worked my way up the ladder. But, buddy, they did. That's how they do it now. It's not that you can't be promoted up the ladder. It's just not the path they take anymore. How's that work, Marty? Do you know? Good for them. Educated, smart, ready to move, ready to take a career step that would move them to another. You know, it's popular to be willing to move when you go into management. It shows your commitment to the company. You're more committed to the company than you are your own desires. Move across the world somewhere. Allow what God says about you in your life to be believable. Go with what you know already. It's the way of faith. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. God has not got a new game plan. It's all a faith game plan. Amen? And our dilemma is we're living in the end of days and it requires a different action. Here's my conclusion. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Our dilemma is we're living in the end of days and the, all my previous years of operation and ministry might have gotten by without pushing back darkness. The day I live in now, you have to push back darkness. You have to shine light and push back darkness. You have to be on the aggressive. You have to be on the offensive. You can't sit back and put out a fire anymore because the fires they build now are like four fire, forest fires with a big windmill on them. I mean, they're organized, man. The dark side is organized. They've got a plan to take over. You've got to kick and scream and stand up right now and say, we're not having it. That's what you've got to do. Thank you for tuning in today on the River Church program. We hope you can join us soon in one of our services. The River Church meets every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We are located at 6716 Central Avenue Pike at Callahan Drive in Knoxville, Tennessee. On behalf of Pastor Dale Berry and the River Church, I'm Chad Coffin. Show.